Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Life, where today we've finally gotten to this lovely specimen. Now, before I get into this video, I want to point out it's been a number of years since I've grown one of these, mostly because, it, you know, certain varieties get into diminishing returns and it becomes a pain in the butt. But anyway, we're going to we're going to do our best. So what is this before you now? Obviously, this is a strawberry plant. It's an ever-bearing strawberry, not one of the alpine ones. Its scientific name is Fragraria ex ananasa. It has a lot of N's and a lot of A's. It's almost practically banana. I mean, woo. But the specific variety is Gasana. You got me. I, I guess it has gas. Whatever. Anyway, it's in the Rosaceae family, which is the rose family, which, I mean, not a surprise looking at the flower structure. This flower, this lovely flower... Normally, by the way, everbearing strawberries are white blooming, but Gasana has pink blooms. And as you can see, this one's already forming a berry. And here's another one down here. Oh, it's going to be delicious. Mm. But the name Fragraria comes from fragrum, the Latin word for strawberry. But they attach the suffix aria, which is a feminine suffix, implying Fragraria with a feminine lean. Uh, I, you got me on that point. I'm not sure why they did that. But anyway, so it is, in this case, it is not, this variety is not particularly native to anywhere. It's a hybrid. Henceforth, the Fragraria X, meaning cross, Ananasa. So it has hybrid origins. The modern ever-bearing strawberry has hybrid origins from America, Chile, Europe, and its great ancestors in what is now China, there are a lot of crosses to get to this point. The history of the strawberry is practically its own 10-minute video. And if y'all are interested, much like the sort of the weird expose I did on, um, on citronella geraniums, I'm perfectly happy to cover that. But for a basic video, not so much. Now, strawberries are hardy in USDA zones 4 through 8. They prefer a pH of 5.5 to 6.5. Their exposure is partial to full sun. Now, the growers specifically noted for this variety six plus hours, which is effectively partial sun or better. Um, you will have to make that judgment in your own yard. We're in zone 8A here, and this thing is gets most day sun, about eight hours on average, maybe 10. Um, and then it's cast in shade for the afternoon so the soil can cool down because it's in a pot, obviously. And I bought this plant, actually funny story. When I bought this plant so that I could talk about it because I had I realized I had completely forgotten about strawberries. The grower was like, don't you want more berries on it already? I said, nah, that's cheating. Weeks later, there they are because I know the strawberries can't wait to burst out with goodness. So the height of this plant, according to the grower, is about 12 inches, which we're not seeing here. But then again, I bought one that was underdeveloped so that I could grow it in my climate and get it to adapt better before it started producing fruit. Its width can be 24 to 36 inches. So I'm assuming that means it's going to produce runners or something. All the pictures of it show this plant growing beautifully in tall pots with berries dripping down. I mean, tons of berries. You can tell I'm a little bit excited, especially since it's popping these gorgeous blooms this soon. I think I only bought this thing about three weeks ago and it went from eh to da-da, which is why I probably I recommend it. Now, I want to point out there are no also known as for your common everbearing strawberry. There just aren't. I mean, we all know what it is and we all agree upon it, which is pretty rare in the plant field. Usually there's a bunch of weird common names tacked on that are some iteration of the original. And wait till you see when I get to Sweet Bay. Oh boy, many names. But anyway, I do need to clarify something scientifically here. Strawberry fruit are not actual berries. I know, some of you are like, what? Yeah, um, they're what's called an aggregate accessory. The fleshy bits do not come from the ovaries as they would in a normal berry, but they're actually the part that holds the ovaries. And so the fruit that's forming here, well, the interesting thing, you can't see it because I don't have any actual strawberries on this plant, but um, the visible seeds on the side of the strawberry are actually the ovaries, and this is called an akin. That's a scientific name for that. It's basically a specific 
ovary structure. So you can scrape those little quote unquote seeds off the side and grow yourself a new strawberry, assuming it isn't a sterile variety. And some of these cultivated varieties are bred to be sterile. There was a big kerfuffle over finding female flowers on a strawberry to get them to, to really propagate. And that changed the growing of strawberries forever. So, I mean, fussing over the sex bits of strawberries has been a long and arduous deal historically. It's amazing. Again, if you want me to do a, a whole video on just that with this lovely specimen in here and maybe a random renegade mischief, I'd be happy to do that. Anyway, so the thing about growing strawberries is that due to the large number of pests this plant can have, strawberries are on EWG's list of the dirty dozen due to pesticide overuse. Strawberries themselves bought at the store need to be washed carefully. They're delicate fruit, don't get me wrong, but they need to be washed carefully to remove the pesticides on the skin. And so they're one of the most pesticide-coated plants when you buy them conventionally. Now, that pesticide allows that food to get to market so people can eat it. So it's a delicate trade-off. Now, in my garden, there are no pesticides, really. I mean, the only time I use pesticides is when it's really, really, really necessary. And then it's usually insecticidal soap. So that's what I would use if this got aphids, which they frequently can do. Um, in addition to aphids, they can get attacked by slugs and a variety of things that are just unpleasant that can ruin your entire strawberry's career. But, but all that trouble for such wonderful fruit, it's totally worth it. Now, I find that growing them in containers and hanging baskets is a good way to mitigate some of that. But hanging baskets and containers have their drawback in that it is a smaller soil column than would naturally be available in ground. And so as a result of this, they dry out faster and you have to do more maintenance and you have to replenish more fertilizer and so forth. Everything comes with maintenance. But anyway, I just want to point out that the United States is the second largest producer of strawberries as of 2021 with 1.21 million tons. That's a lot of berries, ain't it? Woo! And raw strawberries have are composed of 91% water, 8% carbs, and 1% protein. They have 71% of your daily val allotted value of vitamin C and 18% of your manganese. So they're not just empty calories. They're actually really useful. And then you start talking about the coloring agents, the flavanols, and things like that, and it turns out strawberries are really, really good for you. It's not hard to imagine that you don't have to drink a gallon of water a day if you're getting an adequate amount of fruits and vegetables because most of these things have a lot of water in them and your body extracts it from everything you eat. So a gallon a day is kind of a weird medical myth that's unnecessary if you have a healthy diet. Now, if you're eating french fries every day, that's a totally different issue. But anyway, so about strawberries. I've grown them before several different varieties, and this one is much more dramatically beautiful because of the color of the blossoms. I wasn't really expecting them to be pink, but that, I'm okay with that. Um, what I find to do, with, the best way to grow strawberries is in containers, and preferably what you want to do is make sure they get a regular dose of fertilizer. If you're going to throw basic liquid fertilizer at your tomatoes, throw it at your strawberries, the same stuff. Um, I don't believe Epsom salts works necessarily, but your regular general purpose or soluble one does. They respond heavily to nitrogen. Warning. They respond. I'm going to repeat that. They respond very noticeably to nitrogen. So you may want to curtail that if you want berry production. They will produce amazing foliage if you give them something like Alaska fish fertilizer. No, that's not a paid prop uh, advertisement, but you give them something like that, they will respond to have lush foliage and you'll have to dig through it to find the strawberries. Another thing, growing them in a pot means that the strawberries probably aren't digging in the dirt, which means they probably won't get rot as much. That's why I recommend container culture for strawberries. It's just so much easier. Plus, if you have it in a hanging basket at head height, you can actually smell them when they mature, which is why the the weird variety of white strawberry that you get through some legit vendors is amazing because you'll smell your berries at their ripe stage long before you'll ever have any inclination to know that they're ripe otherwise. It also fools the birds. And um, as a last note for this strawberry video, I want to point out that there are a lot of strawberry scams online. 
be careful, especially on Etsy and Amazon. There are people advertising strawberries that are, if you're not wary, they look legit, but they, to my keen eye, I noticed that they've been photoshopped to be colors that they're not supposed to be, like the blue strawberries and so forth. If it looks too good to be true when it comes to a strawberry and it doing something that you would not normally expect, it's probably a fraud. So, with that said, this covers strawberries, a topic that took four seasons to get to, which is weird. But anyway, if you have any comments about this or you have any thoughts about growing strawberries, please put them in the comments section. If you like this video, please like. As always, I invite you to subscribe and help grow our base. I'm doing updates now, and that's wonderful. Um, someone actually suggested that I cover ground cover. And it will be done. So I'm all open to suggestions if you've got them. Kick them thoughts, folks. So with that said, as always, folks, keep them growing. And thank you for watching.